911, what is your location? I'd like to order a pizza. Ma'am, this isn't funny. This line is for emergencies. I can have you charged with a misdemeanor for wasting police resources and my time. I, I'd like to order a, a pizza. Please. Ma'am, are you in danger? That feeling of fear, of tension, of not knowing what's going to happen, just incredibly real in that moment. You just really fall into it and sort of get swept up in it. I'm Nick Pittam and I'm the director of Fire Panda Limited. I was the lead developer on Dispatch. At the beginning of the whole process, Here Be Dragons got in touch. Ed, the director, had a very strong vision of what he wanted from the piece. Dispatch is a story about Ted. He's a 911 dispatch caller. So as he listens to a phone call, he's building up an image of what he's hearing. The job for us was to take that concept and figure out the way that the visuals would build, how that translates through to the technical side. Is someone chasing you? Okay, you gotta help me, man. It's coming for me. We decided on a very distinctive art style. And it just so happened that all of the things we were trying to do kind of broke almost all of those rules that, that you really shouldn't break. The yard hates lines. Things are very hard to see and you get aliasing and lots of technical issues. But I was really impressed with, with the way Nick approached it. Instead of using actual lines to render elements, it was textures with baked in lines. This idea of interconnected lines that are very sort of amorphous and yet still sticking to the form of a character. The characters are based on different audio beats. Different body parts will appear together in different combinations and last and sort of fade in and out at different times. So the mesh that makes up the character, it spawns these particles and then the particles are all interconnected with these lines, which build up this plexus effect. It's considered a bad idea in VR to give people no point of reference because it's hard to tell the difference between your eyes being closed and being in an experience that is mostly black. Trying to pace the story so that you're never left in the dark for too long but you get the sense of being in the dark is both impressively hard to do, but also rewarding when it works. The entire way you see this project is that you don't see it, you hear it. And the method we ended up with is manually keyframing, so it took a lot longer, and it meant that every time we had a, a correction or a change in the audio, we'd have to redo all the keyframes and literally tap them out, but I think it shows in the final product because it means we got to really be specific about which beats hit for certain visual elements. Who's there? So something as simple as the house changes color. When Trevor comes in, it changes to indicate he's there. But also, the objects in the house will pulse to the beat of the tempo of the conversation. So as things get louder and more dramatic, the, the objects flash more. And almost every single item in Dispatch responds to audio. I think it naturally builds a very, very sharp sense of tension and fear. And, and all those sort of emotions come through. In early days of VR, there was a lot of, don't do that, don't have motion. And then eventually you figure out the sorts of motion that can work and does look good. We move through scenes in this. There is a lot of times where the camera moves. We've got the scenery rushing by us. We're in quite a claustrophobic situation. The character is next to us and clearly terrified and panicking and doesn't know what to do. And we kind of want to comfort that person while at the same time we're in the same situation. We took a bunch of tools that were designed for different purposes and we managed to build a layer on top of that that was the way dispatch works. I'd say best practices, certainly when you're starting out, are an awesome guideline. And you should absolutely, wherever possible, follow them. Because, you know, a lot of people have spent a lot of time figuring out what does and doesn't work. But at the same time, you know, you, you should feel free to try it break those best practices. I think there's no rule that can't be broken.